All right, listeners, welcome back to another episode of the Adrian Bow podcast featuring Troy Malcolm, episode number 103. AB, yes. you've given me the intro again. I don't know. Maybe we should ask the listeners who does the better intro. I don't know. I, I, I personally love your intro. I think it's better than mine, but I'm happy to do it uh, where needed. Maybe yeah. we'll put that out to a poll or something on Instagram and see who does the better Great intro. idea. Great um, idea. Great Adrian, idea. Adrian, thanks again um, for allowing me to be part of this. This is pretty special. Episode 103. You've had so many amazing guests over the past couple yeah. of weeks. You obviously had the Lux listing team come on. Um, that's been so well received. And thank you to everyone that yeah. sent in feedback. You've also got a couple of special guests lined up for future yeah. episodes um, that yeah. you're excited to tell me about during the recording. Uh, before we started recording, you've recorded them this week. And um, it's pretty exciting yeah. to see uh, the traction this podcast is getting. So, um, mate, I'm excited yeah. to, to see those episodes, to listen to them. But I'm also excited yeah. to cover off a couple more of the questions that we've yeah. been receiving because as you know uh, we do get a lot of questions from throughout the industry from different people and we want to help out as many as possible uh, and we do try to get yeah. to them so listeners please keep sending those questions through um, yeah. to, to Adrian's email we will cover them off but AB this one is a is a session that we're pretty excited about because they're two great friends of ours that we've we've worked with or been closely associated with for the best part of almost a decade or more so now yeah yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, two coaching clients of mine and ex-colleagues of, of both of ours, uh, Troy, which is um, Karen Terry and Stephen Bock, outstanding team, Team BT, they call themselves, uh, absolutely outstanding humans, outstanding real estate professionals um, and, and outstanding uh, um, people in general. So um, their question as avid listeners um, I know Steve goes on his walk at like 4 a.m. in the morning, and that's just one of his train, training sessions. Uh, for those who don't know, he was the 61st Australian to climb Everest, and uh, he's great to follow on, on all the socials as well. If you're interested, he does a, a, a quite a good motivational talk around his his challenges around, um, around that climb, and uh, he's training for another one as well. So... Um, Look, they're running a, a team and it's growing. And, and I think um, this question will also help a lot of other people around, um, you know, how do we keep our team motivated and, and yourself motivated um, in terms of focus, energy and execution in a changing environment, um, which is very relevant at the moment, particularly the ones that you can't control. Uh, so I think, you know, there wouldn't be a single listener, Troy, that wouldn't want some insight in to this particular topic at the moment, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm getting called into sales meetings with all sorts of uh, businesses at the moment just for, you know, a 15 minute, um, I wouldn't even call it a rev up, I would call it, um, you know, some, some alignment um, and some anchoring uh, around avoiding overwhelm because it's very easy to, to go into overwhelm at the moment with all the, the confusing messages about the real estate market, confusing messages about the vaccine, confusing messages about you know, um, what the politicians are saying, when lockdowns are going to finish. Where... So, look, I, I call it all white noise, Troy, as you know. Yeah. Um, so, so I choose to unsubscribe to, to the news I choose to unsubscribe to um, the 11 o'clock, uh, you know, daily uh, sort of toxic sermon, I call it. Um, and then it's repeated four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock. So, so I, I, just, I just choose to unsubscribe. Now, some people might seem, you know, listening to this that, that I'm ignorant, um, but I, I, I see it as the opposite because frankly, you know, I'm going to end up finding out the case numbers during the day because I, I subscribe to Financial Review and I, I always get something pop up on my screen during the day. But do I need to consume myself in it? I don't think so. Um, does it affect my day-to-day -day, uh, activity in terms of my own productivity as an agent and also adding value to my clients in terms of my coaching clients? No. Um, however there's many that choose to subscribe to, to it all and become immersed in it. And frankly, it's, it's very interesting how people are quite vigilant around what they consume into their body, but not as vigilant around what they consume in their mind. 
Yep. And frankly, you know, this is a diet of destruction when you think about it, um, because, you know, the, the, the messaging and the negativity, it's palpable. It really is palpable. So I, 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 my, my uh, recommendation to everyone is firstly, unsubscribe to the white noise. Um, two is, is I would, without fail, without fail, every single morning, with you or your team member or uh, whoever it is, complete the normal ritual and ceremony of getting up, doing your exercise, having a shower and putting on professional clothes. I don't think there's been one day, Troy, where I haven't suited up, lockdown, COVID or, or, or whatever it is, right? For me, this is a ceremony, it's a ritual. I'm suited up, pocket square tie, I'm ready to go. So even if I just sit in the car and make calls and whatever, that, 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 that's irrelevant to me. It's, it's that ritual, okay? Because I, 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 I know what the opposite looks like because I coach them. And they've said to me, Adrian, I'm feeling terrible. I'm out of momentum. Um, my headspace is really, really off track. Um, you know, I'm confused, I'm overwhelmed. And usually they've gone down that track suit you know, um, you know the, the tracksuit sort of rabbit hole, if you like, where, you know, they're, they're just staying in the same clothes, not going through a ritual, and that, that would be part of it. So that, that's a strong recommendation and a hack, if you like, that we really, really need to stick to regardless, you know. Um, now, even if that ritual you do and then you sit down, you sort of walk out of the door, then come back in and sit down at your desk at home in front of your computer, I'm telling you, you're just going to feel like a whole different person. Right, whole different person. So that that would be one thing. Is that something that you've you've been attempting or doing as well, Troy? Yourself, Adrian. All I have in my mind at the moment is control the controllables uh, when it comes yeah. to having those updates. So you and I speak multiple times every single day, and that's yeah. the one thing that we always say: what is the process? What is the ritual? What is the habit that we're creating that we can remove the head noise? and the destructive. I've actually tried to flip it, Adrian, because I did catch myself when we initially started to see yeah. the numbers increase. I, I, I must be honest, I did catch myself constantly tuning in at 11 o'clock to see what yeah. effect that would have on me as an individual, but what effect mm. that would have on our industry as well. Because I think mm. you know, we are all in a similar position. A lot of the metropolitan areas have, ex uh, have had this experience. So it was kind of like, okay, so what are they anticipating? But I soon realized that a lot of it, like you mm. just said, was negative talk. And it actually was affecting mm. my um, positivity on the world mm. and the way that I view things. So I actually stepped away. And instead of at 11 o'clock watching that, I actually jump onto YouTube and watch a motivational 10-minute mm. uh, episode. Um, so you can search right. a million of them. You can go onto your podcast, but actually just taking away that 11, 11 a.m. routine, I've just created that own personal routine that I'm going and getting yeah. inspired by something as opposed to something negative. So um, control the controllables. Yeah. I think the second part of that is, Adrian, what are the daily habits that you did have in your business that you can easily replicate? Mm. So I love the idea of suit and tie. Um, even mm. if it's suit and tie and going and getting in the car and driving to the coffee shop, buying a takeaway coffee and making a yeah, few calls, absolutely. it's still a really yeah. quality habit. I'm a big exerciser, yeah. so exercise every morning is a key. Um, I've got two yeah. dogs, so walking the dogs. Whatever you can do to stay in the right frame of mind is really important. The second part of that, Adrian, is how do we relate that back to work? I think what we all need to do is do the activities that we always do with our team, especially if you have a team structure, and that's a daily week. Yeah. So daily work yep. in progress. What are our focus areas? What are we going to nail in the AM? What are we going to focus on in the PM? What's follow on or carry over from yesterday? What are we focused on towards the end of the week? Who were the pipeline clients? Straight into that, right, let's get some key activities are going on. We can't control what's going to happen with the government, but we can control our own universe and we can control what we're doing. So having those daily whips and then straight on from there, setting up sprints. So what does the next three months look like? Mm. Because right now we're seeing agents across the board hit numbers that they've never thought or achieved before. We're having agents and businesses and offices having record months. So if yep. it's okay for them to have record months and they're having amazing months back to back, mm. how do we set up our business to have that same type of mindset? You don't have to have record yep. months, but you definitely will be able to achieve that. And if someone else is doing it, the chances are of the people that are listening to this podcast and episode, 
they're in the smart mm. brain. They're probably going to achieve that as well. Yeah. So what are the daily habits? Yeah. Set it up as a 100-day sprint. What are the whips you're doing? All of those activities will actually take away a lot of that negative head noise that you've discussed and that you've unsubscribed to. I've unsubscribed to it just in a different way, just by heaps more activities. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And look, you talked about the whip meeting, and I think it'd be remiss of us not to actually just run through what that agenda would look like. Now, now to the listeners, this relates to whether you've got a team or you haven't. So, so whip is an acronym for work in progress, as Troy said. So, you know, assuming you've got a team of one, two or three, doesn't matter, even if you're on your own, absolutely 100% um, still have this meeting agenda going every single morning. So agenda item number one, would be, um, right, what were the activities and appointments yesterday that require a call to action? Right, so you basically review your diary and you said, okay, I had one buyer appointment, one listing appointment, one price check, uh, I prospected for three hours and I um, a letterbox dropped for another two hours. Right, so go through all of those. What are the call to actions for each of them? So we have a, a ribbon, if you like, placed on every single one of those activities and meetings so there's no leakage in your business. So that's the most important thing, right? Number two, Troy, would be what does the day look like today? And rather than a call to action, what's the preparation required? So I've got, I'm prospecting for two hours. Do I have my list ready? Do I have my dialogue ready? I've got two market appraisers. Do I have my pre-listing kits ready to go and a, and a, and a current market um, analysis ready? Um, I've got a buyer appointment. Do I have everything ready to go for that? So, so that's the second thing. The third thing I, I would certainly be doing is um, effectively, effectively looking at what is the theme of the day going to be? Is it a buyer theme? Is it a seller theme? Is it a prospecting theme? Is it um, past client theme? Is it a new business theme? Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, yeah, absolutely. So I love themes of the day, Troy, um, because a lot of people talk about ideal days and ideal weeks. I, you know, you and I talk about theme of the day because it, you can, you can create this chasm between AM and PM. And let's say it's a buyer focus day or a past client focus day. Well, you can call them in the afternoon and, and, and catch up with them you know, face-to-face um, in, in, in the morning or the other way around, whatever suits you, right? So I think that's, that's really critical. The other one that I've been implementing at the moment, Troy, with all my clients, especially now because I've done a few role plays with a lot of people in the daily whip meetings, um, has been has been that the role plays have been a bit rusty because people have had a bit of a break from uh, prospecting sometimes or a listing appointment or a buyer appointment. So now I'm highly advocating in your daily whip meeting, whether yourself or in the mirror on the phone or with one of your peer partners or a colleague or a team member, just pick a a role play scenario. So it could be chasing an expired, it could be calling an email inquiry with a phone number, it could be a callback, it could be a past client, anything and just role play it. And I'm just talking about, you know, 60 to 90 seconds. It doesn't have to be long and critique yourself or have someone else critique you. So that's, that's a really important one in that whip meeting. Anything else um, from our best practice, Troy, that we've, we've usually advocated for those meetings? Yeah. The only other one, Adrian, that we've discussed uh, in depth with a lot of our clients that we've worked with over the years is celebrating the small wins, right? Because sometimes yep. you can be working, 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 and you can achieve a lot, but you never actually yep. take time to reflect. So always in those whip meetings, you want to stop, pause, take a minute and celebrate yep. some good work that you've been doing. Because I think it's really yep. important right now. A lot of the time, traditionally, when we're in the offices, those small wins are celebrated a bit more. But right now, mm. if you are remote or you're not seeing as many team members or colleagues from what you would normally see in your office, it's important to celebrate those small wins. So um, a lot yep. of my team members, they're on WhatsApp groups. So they're celebrating each other's successes. They're sending personal notes. I know a lot of people are jumping on uh, Zoom meetings or team meetings and they're having that kind of celebration and acknowledgement. Really important right now because it does have a positive impact. And it also makes everyone aware, social proof, Great things are happening out there in the market, in a lot of markets that we're representing. Mm. So let's continue that great work. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think that's critical. And as I said, whether it's yourself or with team members, really critical. So the other part of the question was um, 
you know, focus and energy. So, so a lot of that's going to have to do with, you know, your, your physical energy, because energy is, is something that's physical and mental. So I think whether it's meditation, journaling, walking, running, gym, whatever it is, um, it doesn't have to be too strenuous and, and mm. certainly journaling and meditating art, but will that tune you in to the business channel as Dr. Fred used to talk about, um, which, is, which is a really good uh, segue, if you like, from just awakening um, and, and, and then switching that mindset and, and do the same thing when you get home, by the way. If you've got family or loved ones, you, you want to be switching off that business channel and then into personal channel, right? So, so you really need to be able to do that. And frankly, there, there needs to be a bridge. There needs to yep. be a bridge created in order to do that. And that bridge is usually some sort of breathing, meditation, exercising, journaling, whatever it might be. So it doesn't have to be for two hours. It can be for 31 minutes, which Matt Steinway um, <laughs> advocates, which I think is a great metaphor for everything in life, actually. 31 minutes of prospecting, 31 minutes of exercise, 31 minutes of, of you know, um, talking with your, your, your spouse or your loved one, 31 minutes of calling buyers, you know, like it could be anything really but I just love the whole metaphor of it um, uh, um, in general. Um, so, yeah, I think focus and energy um, uh, was part of the question, Troy. And the other part of the question there was in this changing environment, um, you know, what about the uncontrollables, you know, Steve asked. So, sure, we, we know how to control the controllables, but what about, what about the uncontrollables? Like, do we, do we ignore them? Um, you know, or how do we handle them when we've got no choice but to ignore them because it's a, it's a complaint that comes in or it's a deal that gets off track or it's a listing that you lose. Like these, some of these things you can't control and how you deal with them is absolutely critical, right, Troy? Yeah, and Adrian, we've spoken about what we call the bounce back factor and mm. it's allowing yourself and almost cutting yourself a little bit of slack um, to know that sometimes things don't go according to plan mm. you've got to allow yourself mm. to digest understand um, obviously mm. try to salvage as much as you can from the circumstance mm. that you're faced but also not letting it get too much in your head so having that bounce back factor and I know Adrian you kind of always use the 15 minutes 15 minutes to get really disappointed about it 15 minutes yeah. to work out what went wrong and how to fix it and then 15 minutes to build your energy up and get back out there so 45 minute window or a full hour whatever it takes just to bounce back but I think we do need to understand that you know in circumstances right now um, if you have to sell a property twice because of buyer's circumstances or something something falls over that's okay those things will mm -hmm. happen it's the preparation yeah. adrian that actually sets us up for success so i know that steve is the ultimate person in regards to this and i know that he has mm -hmm. different scenarios and he knows the play before it even happens uh and mm -hmm. so i'm speaking to the broader audience here but i'm saying please just work out if something does go wrong, what is your options? What are the plan B? What's mm. plan C? If that doesn't happen, if something falls over, this is where the really experienced agents have become super successful is because they can see the play before it actually happens. And the scenario that's in front of them, they know if something falls away, they've already got that backup strategy that will still achieve mm. that great result. And I think that's a really important thing for all our listeners is to start to think about what are the different scenarios that may play out in every circumstance and how do you overcome them? Yeah, absolutely agree. I mean, this is such a, a um, underrated part of our industry, Troy, and probably something that's not discussed a lot, which is this bounce back factor, which is this resilience, if you like. Um, I, I, I frankly believe that it's actually more important how you react when something goes wrong than it is how you react when you actually get a deal over the line or sell a property under the hammer or win a listing. Um, because the way you react will actually uh, manifest as both a physical energy and a mental energy and potentially, potentially, um, you know, you could ruminate over this potential, let's call it a loss for the back of, lack of a better term or a deal fall over or a listing went bad or whatever it might be. You could ruminate it over and over into the next six meetings and lose those as well, right? So it, it absolutely makes no sense because, you know, I often tell a lot of agents, it's not like when you first got into real estate, someone sat you down and said, right, Troy, every listing you go for, 100%, mate, you've got them. Every deal that's got offer and acceptance, they're going to go through. No, but yet 
people still turn to water when these things go wrong. So the best agents that you and I work with, Troy, basically budget. They budget for, for adversity, yeah. whether, it's, whether it's in their business, in their life, and you can call them stoics or you can just call them, you know, highly resilient. Um, you know, and I had an agent call me late last night and said, oh, Bo, you wouldn't believe, you know, I just, I lost this listing and, and this is why I lost it because I did this and I didn't do that. And I was, I'm like, dude, you've lost it. Does it really matter? Like, you know, like what the circumstances are like at the end of the day, like, did you learn something from it? Yes or no? And he said, yeah, he said, I did. Yeah, I said, what? And he said, look, there's, there's one thing which I think I could have done different. I said, okay, that's not even guaranteed that that's why you lost the listing, but let's take the win and let's, let's not ruminate over this. Let's just move on to the next one. I said, where are you now? And he said, I'm out the front, just about to go into another listing. I said, great. That's, you need, to, you need to let go of this because I'm telling you, you're going to lose this as well, right? So, so I, I think budgeting for it, not overanalyzing it, like definitely taking a lesson. Don't get me wrong. If there's a lesson to be learned, then take it, but don't ruminate over it. Don't over obsess around it and don't um, overanalyze it because it, it's, it's energy and time and effort that you ain't going to get back and it's not going to achieve that that much and it's certainly not going to um, get you the listing back because it's already gone right so yeah. i think that's that's a really critical one and you and i work with so many agents troy that are outstanding at it some that are getting better um, um, uh, um, better on it and then there's others we've seen unfortunately that have actually left the industry because of it which is really sad because you know they're actually being quite quite skilled people so uh, it's as I said it's something that's underrated not talked about I think it should be a, a massive part of any curriculum when it comes to coaching especially especially when they're first getting into the industry Troy um, even yesterday one of my clients said can you can you vet this candidate who's going to be an associate you know and, you know, and I don't know if anyone knows what my vetting process is like, you know, with associates, but I'm like, dude, are you sure you want this job? Like, do you actually know what it is? And he said, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I know what's involved. I'm going to be, you know, showing properties and, you know, and uh, calling buyers. And I'm like, I, I said, let me tell you, it, you're making it sound very glamorous. It's not that glamorous, right? Basically, Monday to Friday, you're going to be a glorified telemarketer and Saturday, you're going to be helping it open for inspections. Like that's that's a very simple job description for you, right? Um, and he said, look, I'm up for it. I get it. Thank you. Um, I'm glad that you, because, you know, that wasn't made clear to me. I actually had a bit of a different understanding, but I'm really glad you told me because I'm actually ready for it, right? So you're much better off preparing people because that's just going to set them up for the future as well. Yeah, Adrian, I also love the idea that you had there was, um, you know, we speak about bounce back and we speak about the most successful agents um, and mm. what, they've, what they've learned and what they've changed around um, their, their dialogue or just process. Um, I actually mm. think right now uh, for people listening to this, if they are a little bit off track, maybe step back and, and reach out to you or I or anyone, um, mm. the huge yeah. trusted advisor, and talk about re-engineering some of the activities that you're doing. Like you said with the role play, 30, 60 mm. seconds, couple of minutes role playing um, can make a huge difference. Think about that with your pre listing kits. Think about that with your mm. information you're sending before the meeting. Think about that with your listing presentation. Think about that with your open mm. inspection packs. Absolutely everything you're doing, there is a nice moment right now when stock is low that we do get to have a chance to maybe re-engineer a lot of the activities that, quite frankly, when the market's on and what we're going to see as soon as restrictions are eased in a lot of the areas, we're not going to have time to perform these activities. So everything we've discussed, you should put down in a checklist and say, right, do I have a whip in place? Am I focused on things that I can control? Am I really mm. at having a hundred day sprint? The next three months, I'm going to focus on these things. Am I actually looking at um, role playing and also acknowledging the small wins? Do I have a process? Mm. Do I have a daily habit? Do I have a morning ritual? And then finally, what do I need to re-engineer? What do I need to step back mm. and say, you know what, well, we've always done that because we've always done it. It doesn't necessarily mm. mean it's right. Let's take a moment to step back. And I know, Adrian, your team, you do this religiously on a monthly basis. The last meeting of the month is always to take all your checklists, all your processes, all yep. your dialogue and go, right, is it still relevant? Are we using it? What elements are we not using? How do we recreate it and evolve it? 
it blows me away, Troy. You know, I've been doing this for you know over thirty years, and every month we sit down with my EBU and we go through every sale checklist, list checklist, withdrawn checklist, passed in checklist, um, pre pre list checklist, everything. And I'm amazed of how dramatic the changes are within a thirty day period because some items have become redundant, others we've actually learnt don't work and others we've had to re-implement or create new ones because there was a certain circumstance or anecdote which triggered a different type of thinking and therefore a different process, right? So um, that just goes to show you how important it is to review this on, 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 on a monthly basis, but also that, that daily basis and until lockdown, honestly finishes i would i would be role playing every single day in the mirror on your phone or with a colleague because everyone's a bit rusty at the moment uh, you know because we, we you know, over the last two months everyone's done less face to faces they've done less of less prospecting in that initial phase when people weren't really responding to to phone calls so everyone's a bit rusty so um i i definitely highly recommend that as as as, as part of your morning ritual and then tuning into that business channel and staying laser beam focused you know for that time that you are uh, dollar productive and are adding value and are the trusted advisor then when you're at home with your loved ones and family then make sure you absolutely do the opposite and tune out um, because you know we're trying to wear both hats some some part of your life will be cannibalized whether it's spiritual health financial or or relationship you know it's just not worth it you know this is a game real estate's a great game um, but it's it's a foundation and a platform to live a great life and your life is actually really your health your family your loved ones um and your dogs like us right Trey? <laughs> <laughs> absolutely yeah. absolutely hey listen i want to thank karen and steve you know you, you talk about fantastic people um, that do an amazing business that are continuing to evolve yeah. um, their business and grow and some of the results that they've achieved on the northern beaches um, are just phenomenal like you amazing. see some of the results yeah. and their social channels and everything they're doing so super proud uh, to see their results continue super proud to call them great friends of yours and mine adrian um, karen and steve thanks for sending that through hopefully uh, we've answered a little bit of detail that will hopefully yeah. you can implement into your business uh, i know adrian yeah. You work with them very closely to everyone else that is continuing to send through those questions please continue sending them through um, we are going to focus on this for the next month or so covering off a lot more of the q a that we get uh, and we're bringing in a couple of special guests as i mentioned earlier on in the program as well that adrian you're going to have um, some special announcements about uh, coming up so yeah. um, that's it for Absolutely. us this week team uh, rate that podcast five stars on itunes or Excuse any me. of those social channels that's right you don't get an option to rate it anything else but five stars leave your comments uh really does make a difference to what we're trying to achieve with this ab as always mate great to see you i no doubt we'll speak to you four or five times today it seems to be what we're doing as a daily habit uh and absolutely we'll uh we'll see you next week thanks troy thanks listeners stay safe